As riders, we can all benefit from having a little more mobility, whether that's controlling the bike or, should it happen, crashing and flopping around like a noodle. Having an increased mobility is a fantastic thing, and part of your body that can always use more mobility is your back, and in particular, your thoracic region of your back. Hey everybody, I'm Mitch, certified trainer, and I am the Fit for Moto guy on YouTube. Thanks for checking out another video. Today's video, we're talking about your thoracic region on your back, which really just means your mid-back. Now, you may be wondering, why is that an important thing? Well, it's often neglected by riders, but it matters a lot when it comes to injury prevention, your ability to move around on the bike and be more fluid on the bike as a rider. It's pretty important stuff. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple ways that are gonna be pretty much no cost to you at all, but it's gonna help you out a lot when it comes to increasing that mobility in your mid-back. Let's roll the intro and let's do it. Like any muscle, to improve mobility really means to stretch it out and put it through its full range of motions under no load. So really there are a few ways to accomplish this. I'm going to show you three different ways to do it. The first of which is kind of the basis of the other two and it costs you nothing at all. In fact, you don't need any of the equipment that I have here to do it. I'll show you how that's done. So when we're talking about your mid back, right, we're talking about ways to increase mobility of the mid back. And one of those great ways to do that is to just go down onto all fours. You wanna have a slight curve in your lower back, like you don't want your lower back rounded out. Okay, you wanna have that kind of stick your butt out a little bit. You wanna have that slight curve in your lower back. You're gonna take one arm and you're just gonna glide it on the ground underneath your other arm. And as you do that, your shoulders are gonna rotate a little bit and the one side of your back, right? Cause you can think of your back, it's so the left side or right side, work on it one side at a time. As you glide your hand through, you're gonna start to open up that mobility in your mid back. So glide your hand underneath the other arm, keep stretching until you get to a point where you'll really start to feel a stretch in kind of that mid back area, if that makes sense. So again, starting on all fours, just tuck in your lower back a little bit. You don't want it too rounded out. Put your hand on the ground and just start to slide it through. And you can look in the direction that you want to go. That's completely fine. Or you can keep your head straight. Whichever one's more comfortable because you might not have the mobility in your neck, in your trapezoids, things like that. Slide your hand on the ground until you get to that nice deep stretch. And you're just going to hold that. And you're going to breathe. You're gonna hold that for 30 seconds to a minute, and then you're gonna bring that arm back, back into your starting position, and you're just gonna do the other side. Slide the hand underneath, rotating that lower back, and you're gonna get that nice deep stretch in there, and you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna hold that for 30 seconds to a minute. That's number one on how to increase that thoracic mobility. The other two are gonna be a play on that. So that one's really basic. And again, anybody can do that. It's not gonna cost anything and you're not gonna need any tools to do it. Next up, you'll need some type of ball or a roller of some sort. Really, any kind of ball will work. A basketball, a beach ball, doesn't matter. Okay, so method number two, again, playing off method number one, you can have a beach ball, you can have a volleyball, a basketball, uh, it really doesn't matter. Anything that just can be used as a rolling surface. I happen to have here, uh, this is like a spot roller, so it's just a tinier version of a foam roller. And I find these work pretty great for getting into smaller areas, tighter areas. But this is gonna work pretty well when it comes to uh, what we're gonna do. So uh, if you remember in the first movement, right, we just kind of that, that uh, simple movement to come underneath and do the kind of that static hold. Whereas this movement, again, same starting position, but you're gonna use the roller as just a rolling point and you're gonna have, it's gonna be more of a fluid movement. So you're gonna come in, get the nice stretch, come back out, nice stretch, come back out, nice stretch. Now the difference here between this one and doing this, this is a little bit more of a dynamic stretch versus a static stretch like you were doing before. But there's also some, some theories here at play, one of which is that when you perform a stretch in this manner, 
and you come back and then a little deeper, come back and then a little deeper, your GTO or your Gogli tendon organ, I know, weird name, uh, I didn't name it, but it sounds weird, that starts to release more and more. And yes, that does happen in static stretching as well. However, when you do a fluid movement like that, it'll start to release more and more, letting you get deeper and deeper into the stretch. That's the theory behind it. So the static one works well if you have a ball of some sort um, and you can't really hold a static stretch. Maybe, maybe you don't have the flexibility to even, to even hold a static stretch like that. This is another great option. You can just start with your, with your hand on the roller and just roll into a position that's comfortable. And if you need to, you can back it off a little bit, however much you need. You can roll deeper, really get that stretch in there, come back up. And you're gonna feel quite a bit of this in your mid back. So one, just a simple static stretch. Number two, use some sort of rolling point, get a little bit deeper into the stretch, activate that GTO, your gogly tendon organ, gogly tendon organ, however you pronounce it, GTO. Activate that, get it to release a little bit so you get a little bit deeper into the stretch. That is number two. And thirdly, if you have some available resistance bands, they are a great way to aid in stretching in that range of motion just a little bit. You don't wanna to pull too hard or too far past your body's current ability, but these can be beneficial. Okay, so number one, static stretch. Number two, more of a dynamic stretch, right? We're using that bit of that rolling point. We get a little deeper, a little deeper in the stretch. And number three is we can use resistance bands to help us along. Now I have this pivoted a little high, just have it anchored on the garage door, but the principles will all be the same. So again, starting in your normal position point, right? You're gonna have your, your hands uh, kind of in that um, uh, hands and knees position. And instead of doing this, we're on a roller, we're kind of going back and forth. We're gonna grab onto uh, the resistance band and we're gonna have it help us to pull us into a deeper stretch. So you can um, just grab it from underneath the other hand, same position, and you're gonna use the resistance in the band, the stretch, to just pull you deeper into that stretch. And one of the bonuses about this is that you're not, you're not, you know what I mean? You're not trying to hold it, you're not trying to force it. You're just, all you're doing is you're relaxing and that band is going to pull you into the stretch. So if you just relax, the band pulls you back, right? Pretty straightforward. So uh, obviously different bands are gonna have different tensile strengths and different elasticity to be able to pull you back. It kind of goes with whatever you're comfortable with or maybe it's just whatever you have at home to give you a little bit of a hand. So just holding it, maintaining that position. You wanna have that tuck in your lower back a little bit, but still let it to rotate and let the band just pull you and just, you're just relaxing. You're just letting the band do the work. You're letting the band pull that mobility across. Instead of the, the static and uh, the rolling point one, where you're kind of having to put more effort into it, if that makes sense. So that's, that's the three ways uh, that are really easy to increase your thoracic mobility. The static, the rolling point, and a rubber band. Okay, so there you have it. There's three pretty easy ways to increase your thoracic mobility. There are other ways to do it, and I'll get into those in a later video, but those three will definitely get you started off. I hope you liked the video. I hope this is beneficial to you in some way. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like me to touch on as far as mobility, rehab, prehab, strength, anything that you need to know. I'm your guy, let me know. Hope you liked the video, we'll see you in the next one.